Well, I did something sort of dumb. I was playing YouTube on the television, and in the background you could hear the audio from YouTube coming across in my video. I don't want to get a copyright ding, so I went ahead and pulled the audio out of this video, and I'll narrate the thing. Here's the bottom of the Scott 800B chassis, the amplifier and FMIF chassis. You see the stages I worked on, the FMIF, FM limiter, main power transformer and rectifier. Put some Y2 safety caps in, there's the 12 volt relay, and I worked on the output stage. We'll start to take a tour here. We'll start with these Y2 safety caps. I've got one cap on each side of the line in. Um, basically they're noise filters and uh, if they short out they won't they will not make the chassis live so that's why they're safety caps. There is a 4 microfarad 600 volt capacitor in there mounted in a can that sticks out the top of the chassis. There it is right there. I disconnected that, left the can alone for looks, and I put two 10 microfarad 450 volt caps in series to replace it. That should give me 5 microfarads at about, oh, I think about 800 volts. All right, let's look at the, uh, the, the bypass caps. The original heater and cathode bycap, bypass caps were just paper and foil caps. They're, you know, quote unquote, sealed in a plastic domino case like the old mica mold plastic. Uh, cases were. They're notorious for failure, so I just replaced them without even testing them. They were 6200 micro picofarad, but I put 68s in there. I should still be okay. They're just bypass. Most of the resistors were pretty good. They were less than 10% off of the, the uh, value that's indicated by the color bands. So I left most of those alone. There are some carbon comp, and there's even a metal film uh, resistor that I replaced. Um, other than that, uh, they're, they're in pretty good shape. Replaced all these electrolytics. They should do just fine. And there are some more carbon comps. These red wires are not original, I don't think, but they were in there when I got the radio. And uh, I'll go ahead and, and do some, you know, run the radio before I start messing around with these wires. I did some work down there on the fuse holders. I put a new uh, power cord in, rewired that transformer when I put it back in. All this stuff's in good shape. There's the three amp fuse, and the one amp fuse is the one closer to you. These uh, uh, the, these didn't really need anything other than to be pulled out while I painted that back section. Here is the receiver chassis. By the time you see this video, I'll have already started on this thing. I've been working on it on my bench. The bench is a mess, but I'll get it cleaned up. It's been busy around here. All right, we are going to start working on this receiver chassis now. Before I can do much of anything, I've got to get all of this stuff, all of this uh, tuning indication stuff off of here. And uh, the, of course, the glass is fragile, so I want to get the glass off soon. I am going to need a whole buttload of uh, baggies because that's how I do everything. So let's start to take this apart. First thing I'm going to do is take this glass off and get this out of my way. I don't want to break that. So in order to do that, it looks to me, well, I've never taken a, an 800B apart before, so it looks to me like this, uh, this little light, this little lamp holder needs to come out. And to get that out, I have to get the, the lamp itself out of the holder. So let's, let's first do that. This is very typical of the way other radio manufacturers do lamp holders. It's just a... Uh, slides on to the deal the lamp just slides on but this one hasn't been moved in some time so it's a little bit on the stiff side and I'm going to need better pliers for that there we go okay slide straight up I want to be careful because this plastic is probably rather brittle okay I might as well do the other side while I'm at it Okay, there we go. Other lamp holder is out. Um, there's lots of lamps that are buried behind here. I'm not going to worry about those at the moment. Um, one, another thing I'm going to need to do is take out these tune guys because I don't want to break those either. So they just slip out of the, the clamps here. And rather than having them kick around, both of these are dead. So I'm just going to pull them out. I didn't have them kicking around causing problems. It's a 65. I'll run them across the tester just to be sure. But uh, they are not lighting up with the radio. That doesn't mean there's not a problem in the radio preventing it. So I will run them across the tester. Who knows? Maybe they do light up, but it's rare. 
those that, that have restored a lot of radios know you seldom find a good tuning eye in an old radio. You usually have to replace them or learn to live without them. I'll pull the tubes off shortly. I like to get all the fragile stuff off of it and out of my way because fragile stuff becomes expensive stuff if I break it. And so I don't want to have to replace stuff. And uh, these little cardboard covers go over the lamps. And basically they just make it so that the light only comes out in a little circle out off of the end of the lamp. See, there's one right there. It slips right over the lamp holder like so. And then that way the light only comes out the end and it doesn't bleed through the back of the radio. You don't want to lose those because, you know, you know that they're just going to be a size that you can't find anywhere and take the light bulbs out too. You can test those really fast. I, don't, I, I believe they were all working but I'll test them to be sure. Take all this stuff off because it's fragile and you're going to be banging around on this chassis for a little while. You don't really need to break them. Even the light bulbs, you know, you buck here, buck there, it adds up. So try not to let it add up. Next thing is I pull these holders themselves off. I need a small screwdriver. I like to use these small electrical screwdrivers. These are nice because they have pivots on the end so they make it easy. And I'm going to put all the, these little parts into one bag. So the light bulbs, the, the cardboard tubes, the screws and the holders all in one bag so that I have them in, in an easy to find spot when I need to. Sometimes I like to open this drawer because little things like screws go rolling off the table and they go down into the floor monster and the only way they are ever, like that, see? The only way they are ever found is in the vacuum cleaner. And wifey doesn't like it when the floor monster catches screws, so. One holder, two holders, four tubes, Four light bulbs and four tiny tiny screws. While I am at it, I'll go ahead and take these light bulbs. This one looks burned out, but I'll take it anyway. From the main lamps, the dial lamps. Put those all in here and label the bag. I've had this radio since June. And the owner's starting to get a little bit frustrated. Once, because the truth is the furniture the restoring fella has gotten all of the furniture work done. And I'm not done with the electronics yet. But what what uh, is hard for me to explain, and it really is, the electronics take a lot of time. This, the, the work on this radio was mostly electronic work. The cabinet was very straightforward. It's a big beefy cabinet, but very straightforward. One cabinet is like another cabinet in a lot of ways from the early four, or the late 40s. They're all very similar. So there were no mysteries in doing that, but this, the, the, the contents of this cabinet were a big deal. And so, I can't hurry this radio. I'd like to be able to, because believe me, I'd like this job done. I'd like to get on to the next one, but I want it right. And the last thing I want to do is spend a, a year troubleshooting this silly thing once it is done. Okay, this part I have to be careful about. To remove the dial, you loosen these clamp screws. It has these holders here. You can see these clamp sections here. A lot of times there will be rubber under these, but not so on this one. They look like they just sort of slide on and clip onto the glass. Last thing I need is for something to crack because I've loosened one screw all the way and not loosened another. So you loosen them all some and you let it kind of relax a bit and then you go ahead and get the rest. Get them the rest of the way. Again, these are small screws. What I have noticed on this Scott is there are a lot of screws that are not magnetic. So you can't count on the magnetism of your screwdriver to hold on to those screws. Which makes it kind of a pain. I'm sure stainless is cool. There was some rationale. They don't corrode. 
but they are a pain in trying to keep track of them. All right, there's one, one screw. We sounding like the count on Sesame Street soon. But see, if I say it out loud in the video, then I don't have to write it down because I can always go back to my video. Even if I don't include it in the YouTube video, I can always go back to it and check out the raw video and see what I did. That was the original reason I wanted to start recording anyway. Um, and then, you know, of course, YouTube was a natural extension of that. I find myself taking fewer and fewer notes now. Because, we'll say, I'm measuring um, DC resistance of a coil. Well, if I just say it out loud, well, then I don't have to write it down. As long as I can keep track of the digital file. But then the same caveat is true when I have written notes. As long as I can keep track of the notes, I'm good. So let me re remove this one. See, there's the, the clamp that just slides on the glass. And there's nothing, there's, there's no real clamping action. It basically just holds it from sliding off. Okay, now I should be able to slide this glass right out of there. Yes, indeed. This is golden. I know I can get a replacement for this if I break it, but I don't want to. I'd rather just keep it. So I'm going to put this away right away and make sure this does, nothing happens to this guy. Okay, I'm safe. Good deal. Now I can finish removing this little holder. And truth is, I'm not sure I need to remove this. I think I'll just put it back on loosely. That is another good way of keeping track of things, is to kind of reassemble them, rather than putting all the stuff in a baggie, just reassemble them loosely so you know where stuff goes. That's a really, really good way of doing stuff, and I think I'll do that on some of this. That gives you the advantage of sometimes helping you to orient them where you might otherwise forget. Alright, so I'm looking at how this is assembled. It's a composite thing, and the thing is, I really, really don't want to disassemble it on the chassis. And I, it, it reminds me of the Zenith robot dials or shutter dials, in that it's really to your benefit to leave it as much assembled as possible, mostly so that you can know how to put it back together when you do finally get to it. It's to your benefit to do that and remove it as one big piece if you can. And I'm looking at this, Scott, and I'm thinking this section here, this middle section, along with the, uh, the tuning stuff in the back can be removed in one piece. So this, what we have, I showed you a picture early on with this. There's a very large disc here that is attached to a long shaft all the way to the, to the front and to the mechanism that drives the dial string. You can see I'm turning it here and I might as well what I might as well do is go ahead and remove this section because there are some set screws here. I'll put some pictures in the video. There's some set screws here where I believe that I can just loosen these. There's some machine screws holding this assembly down right here in the center. It straddles the shaft. And then there's a set screw arrangement. And the thing is, if I, do, if I disconnect this set screws and slide this bugger off of here, then I will not have to mess with alignment or anything on any of this. The, uh, the the dial cord I have to the dial cord is made of brass so it is not going to have to be replaced it's and if I just leave it alone I'm better off I can clean all this without taking it apart and I'm much better off doing that so I'm going to go ahead and take take this loose and see what I can do These have not been loosened since 1947. And I'm at the wrong end of the gear drive, so I want to be careful with it. Okay, they're, they're 90 degrees apart. There's two of them on each part of the shaft. <clears throat> you know, the the prospect of stripping these doesn't turn me on. 
So you got to do it. You got to get it right the first time. I didn't notice, guys, that my little buddy Marty's gotten himself behind my uh, stereo equipment and is now chewing on speaker wire. So I had to stop him. Oh, here we go. Wow. That is one well-made set screw, though, because if that were a normal Chinese junk set screw, that thing would have been stripped before the first turn. All right. Shaft is loose. All right. We're in like Flynn, man. This will slide right off of there. This is an elegant radio, boy, I'll tell you. Very well-made. Very well put together. Everything's super tight, though. You can tell this thing that has not had to be taken apart. <clears throat> All right, that's a good sign. So when you loosen the screws, it's always good to stop part way and check and see how t what you've loosened up because sometimes you get a nasty surprise when you take things apart and stuff that is being that is sort of captive by what it is you're loosening falls out. Now you have to figure out how it went back together. Okay, so this is attached at the bottom somewhere. I see two screws, and I'm hoping those are they. Is that grammatically correct? Come on, who's the English teachers out there? You tell me, is that correct? Those are they. Is it those are them? Or them are they, or them are those? What is it? Come on, guys. We've got, some, we've got some smart people out there. You can help me out. Let's see if that's it. Now Marty is tunneling under my bench. I'm sure he's finding some other mischief to cause. Oh, yeah, that's going to do it. I'm pretty sure... Yep, there one goes, right down to the floor monster. Crap. Little tiny short screws, I mean tiny, go right down here at the bottom. Under this dial, there's a bottom, there's two screw holes there. These really short screws, they almost look like they're broken, but they're not. They go down there. There's something else, this is... All right, I'm going to have to tip this up on its side and see what I see because I'm not seeing everything from this side that I need to see. Thankfully, this doesn't have all the iron on it that the other chassis had, but it's heavy enough. And it's definitely heavy enough. And you want to make sure you prop it under something firm so you don't wind up bending something or breaking it. There we go. That'll work for the moment. Oh, this is a bummer. So, what I have to do looks like First things first, I have to pull this front face plate off, which means I have to take all these knobs off. Because underneath this, uh, I didn't realize that bracket goes down here, uh, right here, mounts at the bottom, but the but there's a motor right there, the tuning motor is situated such that it's right behind it, so it's not going to be an easy thing to get out of there. So, let's get to work on these knobs. They have to come off anyway, right? So we'll go ahead and take those off. They are set screws. I don't usually take the set screws all the way out. I leave them in the knob. Oh, boy, these things are tight. Okay. There's one set screw. This one has a little pointer on it. I don't know if they all do or not. I'll know when I look at them.
Okay, that one has a little red pointer on it. I guess they're all red. I see red there too. I might be able to touch those up. I don't know. Sometimes it's better just to leave them be, even if the red is gone. Boy, these are tight. But I guess, you know, stainless hardware has its advantages. Nothing has stripped so far. <clears throat> it really pays off to have a good quality tool, too, because you use a cheap Chinese junkie tool that doesn't fit well, then you're, then you're in trouble. And then make sure it's really well seated into the hole. <clears throat> Boy, that one does not want to come loose. There's always one. Always. So far, every knob has had a little red pointer on it. That one was loose. Interesting. Looks like a replacement shaft. Okay, that's good to know. That's the volume shaft, so maybe the volume pot was replaced. Like I said, there is always one that will not come loose. So let's see what we can do here. Let's get it in there. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I had to get creative and use the, I don't know if it's a crimper or a cutting portion of this vice grips and set it up just right so I didn't damage this tool, but get up on the tool nice and tight. All right, so there we go, got it. I will have cut the video out, but that took about 15 minutes. All right, so all the knobs. Go in their own baggie. I don't have to label every baggie. I'm pretty sure I'll remember that those are knobs, especially after fighting that one. All right, so I'll go ahead and remove this little knob of scutcheon. I'm not going to do anything to change the color of it. I'm going to clean it up. And per my usual procedure, that's weird. That's kind of a, it's kind of a really hard plastic, almost like Bakelite. It looks almost like Bakelite. I wonder if that's what it is. Hmm. But it was drilled. It wasn't molded with holes. It was drilled. Fascinating. Boy, I tell you, I think they went out of their way to make a nice radio. Unlike, you know, you look at a Zenith, right, uh, 19, late 1930s Zenith, you look under the chassis and it's a mess, but the damn radios perform really well. A Zenith in good working order will pick up stations better than just about any radio out there on the consumer market, you know, at the time. And uh, you wouldn't know it when you look at the underneath, underside of the chassis what, from the mess that they are. This cover has to come off. It's even adjustable. Oh my gosh. Scott really went out of their way, I'll tell you. See that? There's a slot on this side here to make sure they're both slotted so they can be adjusted. I think that's so they can be adjusted. Maybe it's to make up for manufacturing errors. I have no idea where I got the thousands of baggies that I have. But I do have them. So we have this screw, a star washer, and a little tiny flat washer. That's how they go back together. always one. There 
is always a tight one. Guys, I'm, I'm sure you have the same experience. It doesn't matter whether it's a car, your old international tractor, your farm old farm oil tractor, a radio, or one of your kids' toys. There's always one that's hard to get to get removed or won't line up or whatever. Always one. Okay, so this can, should be able to come off now. Okay. There you go. It's kind of a pretty battleship gray color. I think I can be I can polish that with some 3M and that'll look real nice. Yeah, so that is painted. You can see the overspray on here. Or some kind of anodizing. I don't know, it looks like paint to me. But anyway, I'll polish that up. That'll be nice. My hope is on this chassis that there's a lot that doesn't need to be redone. Because I did not bid this job expecting to have to do tons on the, on the receiver chassis. Okay, you see this arrangement right here. What you don't see is that behind it is the tuning motor. Let me, uh, let me see if I can't get you to see it. Okay, there is the tuning motor. And you see this arrangement here is what we're looking at from the front. This plate here is part of that bracket up here that I've been removing. You see it moving there. So I've got to loosen this, and this should come off this way, off of this shaft. But I'm not sure that it will, and I've got to maintain what's going on here with this spring, which I don't quite know. And this here looks like a friction wheel arrangement, kind of like some of the older radios. You see that? This disc here is a friction wheel, so that should slip right out from in between these two discs. And then this thing should be able to slide off of that shaft, but let's see if we can do it, because I do not want to have to remove that. If I don't have to remove that motor, I won't, because it might not be a motor that I can get in and do anything with the bearings anyway. So let's have, let's have a look. Yeah, this whole thing should come off that way. I do not know what's going to hold it back from this side. So this screws into, uh, it looks like some kind of a, there is a, like an insert there that's threaded. So I think I can slide this off of that shaft. There really is only one way to find out, isn't there? First, let's loosen things and see what comes loose. Alright, that's the best approach because if it isn't the right things, I can always put them back. Okay, so now I need a, a baggie right away for that guy because the last thing in the world I want is it screws kicking around, not knowing what they're for. So these screws that I'm pulling off now machine screw with a star washer about a quarter of an inch long there's two of them that little plate that seems to retain yeah this little plate slides off of that shaft there is a small washer behind it it might be a fiber washer I'm not sure yet but this slides off of here okay so let me mark the front side so I know what side is the front. Okay. Now, what we have is a very small brass washer. Okay, that goes behind that plate, but in front of all this, these doodads here with the friction discs. So that little tiny brass washer is going to go in the bag with it. Okay, so, now, this whole thing should slide off as an assembly once I loosen these bottom screws. Always loosen the screws first before taking them out. Because you never know. Yep, that's going to do it. Okay. Wow, that's quite the assembly. Very, very well built. So these are slightly bigger screws. They have a star washer. About a quarter of an inch long, but they're bigger head and bigger, um, sh bigger shank. There's a star washer and a small washer behind the screw head. 
And they go in there with that one. Now that's going to want to fall when I take that out. There we go. These go in there. Let's see if we get lucky here. Hey guys, I just looked at the clock and realized I'm breaking my 30 minute rule here. So I want to end this video now and we're going to pick up right in this spot in the next one and I'll have both of them uploaded today. It is Friday, January 20th and uh, we'll get both of them up there today and uh, I hope you're still interested and sorry I went a little long.